So this is the abstract data Octo controller. This is an eight output, 12 function uh, control module. Um, and for each of the different functions, so we have uh, gate functions, LFOs, some digital noise, sample and hold, CV and gates, so random gates, and uh, our 10 pre-programmed arpeggios and 10 pre-programmed trigger loops. Um, and for each one of these functions, you also have a um, you also have a clock division and multiplication based on the tempo which you set up here. Um, you also have a phase offset of that clock division or multiplication. Um, these can be quantized to the temp the original tempo, but you can also turn this off by touching these buttons here. Each one of the functions also has an option which uh, change how the changes the behavior of that function. In this series of videos, what I'm going to be doing is uh, building patches based on uh, the Octo controller. So all my pitch and all my clocking information will be coming from this module. So in this patch, what I wanted to do is uh, make some kind of IDM-ish style beats using the Octo controller for all my clocking duties. Um, and basically how I'm going to be doing this is using the external reset input to reset at a kind of random point in time. Um, and I'm going to be using the uh, sample and hold gates to create that point of when we reset. Um, so basically I started off with this kind of beat. Um, and basically I have, first output is my kick drum. It's on uh, the loop setting, a uh, division that I want with an offset of zero. Um, next up on the second output is um, my snare drum. So that's on the gate setting, division that I want and the offset is 180 degrees so that it's where the snare should be. Um, and then we have our hi-hat on number four here, which is just, obviously just, um, uh, which is just uh, the pulse, uh, gate outputs, pulse outputs, um, at the division that I want. Obviously if I want to speed up my hi-hats or slow them down, I can. And both the snare and the hi-hat are just uh, triggering my opening my quadra and then they're both just uh, pitch noise, digital noise from the uh, hex inverter, the voltage controlled noise um, so that we can do stuff like that, which is fun. So put that clock division back. Notice how it resets at the beginning of the bar. Pretty useful. You can turn that function on or off um, by using the uh, these grayed out option buttons. So now I've turned that off and I change it to just it just changes where I want it. I turn that back on, then it will reset on the bar. So. useful. Anyway, let's get back into the external reset. So basically what I've done on uh, output three is I am on the sample and hold gate setting and I've got it on the division as fast as it can go um, and I'm outputting that number four into my clock divider. So basically um, I'm taking the seventh output into the external reset. Um, and I've got this on a little attenuator cable so I can bring it in and out as I want it. And you can kind of create like fills by doing this. So Just like that. Um, the cool thing about these uh, sample and hold, these two, the CV and the gates, is that you can have this kind of looping function, which is almost like the uh, Turing machine sort of random looping section. So. If I just do that on this sample and hold gate output, number three here. So now it's it's looping a random section. Um, obviously that's going into my uh, clock divider, but so there should be some sort of random-ish, pseudo-random loop going on. As you can see, there is. Um, obviously if I don't like that I can change that. 
so now there's a, a kind of pseudo random uh, thing going on. Obviously, if I change the settings on my clock divider, you can get different reset inputs, um, different fills, etc. Um, I also have a bit of CV going into the rotate input of the clock divider, which obviously rotates these outputs based on incoming CV, um, and that again would change the reset input. So anyway, so that's uh, the kind of rhythmical section of this patch. Um, I also have um, this kind of like ACDS baseline, I guess. Um, which is this output here, and it's my pitch diagram oscillator. So if we go there, um, basically this is the pitch, and then this eighth output is the rhythm. Um, and this pitch is just from uh, an arpeggio. Um, obviously, I can change the division as I want it, and I've got an offset of 180 just to kind of uh, give it some uh, a different feel. An offset feel. Um, so that's that kind of patch. Basically, it's just a square output, a single square from the Pittsburgh into the Borg filter, um, high resonance. Let's change that, obviously. Um, I've got these incoming CV to open the uh, open the filter as well. Um, so that's that sound. Uh, next up, we have this. Um, which doesn't sound like much there, but together it kind of gives it uh, another feel. Um, and as you can hear, this sound is opening at the same time as the kick drum. So basically, I've just molted my uh, kick drum trigger input to open a VCA on my filter and basically this input into this filter is um, my two oscillators so it's my uh, saw output of the Pittsburgh oscillator and the saw output of the Dixie into the spring reverb and basically what I'm doing is using the uh, external feedback input to input the second oscillator so we have this kind of like almost it sounds like a chord um, and obviously when I change my reset and the kick drum changes, it kind of goes with it. So you get this kind of like... So that was nice. Um... I was enjoying that, um, but I felt like I needed some kind of like droning sort of thing to go on in the background to give some and to give some spatialness. So uh, we have this, which is um, my two output, my two oscillators um, mixed in various ways through. I think one of them is going through the Super Saw Tour, um, the other one's going through the Spectrum Devastator. Um, we have like various outputs of these mixed in, um, filtered and mixed in certain ways, input into the Mankato filter, um, and then we've got a bit of FM from the Dalek modulator down here just to give it that sort of feel. And then basically the output of that is into a VCA which is controlled, uh, the opening and closing of the VCA is controlled by an envelope on peaks which is being triggered by uh, this output down here number seven and so uh, all together we have this 